what's up? The Emperor Powerhouse Miniatures. How are you doing? This is a video miniature painting tutorial on how to paint grey armour on a Praetor in Cataphractor Terminator armour. So first off, this is a model from Warhammer Fest, a Forge World event exclusive Praetor in Cataphracty Terminator armour. It's got like a combi Volkite weapon and a Thunder Hammer. So I've got two of these at uh, Warhammer Fest this year. Uh, well, got them both on the day. Um, I was with somebody at, like at the time, so they got one and uh, and give it to me, sort of thing. I think it was one each. So primed chaos black, and then they've given it a zenithal highlight of um, Mechanica standard grey. So it's like a a really dark grey. Um, just with a zenithal highlighting. So yesterday I put up, or at least whatever day it is, yesterday the twelfth of June or something, I put up a. Uh, airbrush tutorial on a really quick tutorial on what zenithal highlighting is basically zenith zenith other than meaning um like a peak of someone's performance a zenith is in uh yeah a peak or a pinnacle of someone's you know of, of something it's an astronomical term basically meaning the point at the very you know at the, in the center of the sky directly above the observer uh, and yeah it's used in astronomy and stuff so uh zenithal highlight of Mechanicus standard grey. It's basically you just you get the airbrush like um, this is the airbrush sort of thing. You just get it from like directly above and uh, and paint across the top areas. So that's pretty much it. And then like the short answer to the question how you paint grey armor is uh, black armor. Sorry, is grey. Like you use various shades of grey. So this is my normal recipe for grey. So you can uh, you can use it yourself. Null oil. It's black surface primer. It's a really thick black from uh, Vallejo. Um, like the polyurethane primer, so it's it's slow. Well, I prefer it to uh, Abaddon Black, Dark Reaper, Eshin Grey, Mechanica Standard Grey, Light Grey from uh, Vallejo Model Air again, exactly the same as Dawnstone from Games Workshop, but for some reason I like this one. Celestial Grey and then Ceramite White. So basically, if you're really going to do it in edge highlighting, you'd pick like three of those. So you'd start off with black, you'd go to Mechanica Standard Grey, you'd go to Celestial Grey, and then White, or maybe you'd go. Dark Reaper, Mechanicus Grey, Celestial Grey, or maybe you'd go Light Grey, Celestial Grey, Ceramite White, you know what I'm saying? So you'd go like, you'd pick three or four of them or something and you'd do that. Uh, and you can do one one of each colour in a thin layer, or you can do two or three thinner layers of each colour and then work your way that way. It depends how much time you got, depends what the effect you're going for is, blah blah blah. So, I've started off with Mechanicus Standard Grey, so basically I'm going to go... Um, light grey and then celestial grey or something like that. I'm going to pick three in total for the edge highlighting. Then I'm going to show off the way that you would normally do some sort of like a a chromey, highly reflective sort of thing at the same time. So fingers crossed if it works, I'm going to do edge highlighting on one and then a sort of a more stylized, cartoony highlighting on another. So while this one's drying, I'll paint this one and, and all that sort of thing. So basically, the tips for painting grey is you leave the majority of the armour black. So that when somebody looks at the armor, the majority of what they're seeing is black, um, and then that's it. Because if you're painting Raven Guard, Iron Hands, Black Templars, Sable Swords, or something like that, you're going to want them to look black from a distance. Whereas something like a Red Scorpions that are actually grey, like Carcharodons or something, it's like a, a you know, it's not black, but it's very dark. You would obviously base coat completely with charcoal grey from Vallejo or, or whatever you'd use to paint the grey. Like Red uh, Red Scorpions in particular is charcoal grey. So you'd do that from the very beginning and then you'd work up slightly higher colours, but again they'd still work. So charcoal grey would be like this sort of thing as a base coat and not the black. And then you would maybe airbrush with Mechanicus grey or the light grey and then you'd highlight up a bit lighter. And again you can get a similar sort of edge highlighting result. And at the end of the day, it's all an artistic style, it's all subjective. We've all got our own you know, interpretations of what comes down to, you know, it's just personal preference at the end of the day. So if you like the arty, arty cartoony comic book style, then great. Do smooth, high contrast, stylized blends at points and you know the bits of the model that catches the light. And if you like an, the heavy metal style, you do a solid, bold colour scheme with really like, yeah, it's really thick, uh, not, well not thick, thick is the wrong word I suppose, like bright base coat and then very neat, crisp edge highlighting. And again, if you like the airbrush style, um, then do that and you get like a really smooth blend. It's all, it's all up to you, it depends what sort of thing you're going for. Or sometimes for me as a commission painter, you, um, you're you painting stuff to match somebody's army or somebody's got their own, again, somebody else's style um, and you're just sort of like playing up to it or, you know, you're um, trying to get it to match. So, 
These ones in particular, so the one on the left I'm going to do the edge highlighting, so like I said, it's got one layer already of Mechanica standard grey, so I'm going to go in real thin with uh, Vallejo model air light grey. Thin. So this bit here is going to be, uh, I think it's gold or something in the end, so I'm just going to go around um, the knee pad, the inside of the leg, and then the bottom half of the leg. Right, knee pad. And then just around the very tops of the uh what the thigh I suppose, isn't it? Right, so there you go, pretty much. As I said, I'm just going to do the um, to focus there. Right. There you go, yeah. So uh, I'm just going to do the inside of this thigh, and then again, some of these areas here are uh, you know, going to eventually be different colours. So this trim there, for example, I'm going to do like a gold colour, or maybe like a bronze or something. So the knees and that are going to stay the same colour. Uh, and then, some. I mean, this trim that I've done grey there would probably be gold as well. So let's say I'll just I'll just come in on this one. Just from there. Uh, and then this bit as well. This this so this little uh, pauldron thing is gonna be whatever chapter colour I decide to paint the thing eventually. So I'll leave that off. Yeah. And then this bottom part. Nudging the camera while I'm doing this, I've got to stop doing that. Right, so that's pretty much it. Um, so the idea is you've got one or two thin layers, and again, this one you can just obviously you can just it's just catching across the bottoms of each each piece, you know, the very edge. Uh, in fact, I'll just do this little bit while I'm here. I'm not doing the whole thing obviously just now. I'm just doing the bits that you'll see when you look straight on the model. So like from there, you know, it's like the edges that come up this side. Obviously, I do all all of it at once, all across the back, every every piece that's uh, not going to be a different colour, so just that and then on this one on the right while well, this one's drying, this one I'm going to do like a stylized thing and just show you what I sort of do, so it's slightly thinner paint and then, so this is the angle you're going to photograph the model from so the light lines would catch on the model like there across here And then probably down the centre of the shin, like there. So we're not doing edge highlights. We're doing like a, um, a, a well, don't we call it like a just shading it in, I suppose. Just in thick lines to all line up. So like when you look at it, it's this bit right in the very centre, because like from the the very middle, it's there, there, and there. And then this one, going to be the same. So like right down the center of the thigh. Right down this, you know, so it all lines up so it's like straight in a perfect line, you know, across the leg. Like that. Right. So hopefully you can see that. And again, I would do I would do more layers basically if it was if it was going to be for something high level and if I weren't recording it, I'd do more layers. So just you know, just so you get a really quick idea and that you can see, because like I said, the the short the short answer of painting black armor is grey. So just you know, various shades of grey. And like I said, this is my recipe. So you, I'd usually pick three, or four, or like 
instead of doing three thin layers of like three or four of them, I might do like two, 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 you know what I mean? And, and work up from there. But uh, I don't know, sometimes I kind of mess that up and then it doesn't look as good or something, I don't know. Like, sometimes it's kind of difficult to uh, to judge that. So I've got Celeste, okay, right? which is the next one, just to, again, edge highlight, mix with a little bit of water. A bit more water. Uh, I'd use medium again. If I was uh, just doing it for myself, I'd use the mediums, but mediums take a lot longer to dry, so it's difficult to, uh, you know, to save me editing all these things together. So, like that. So again, we're going to build up the colour towards the edges of the, the model, so it's going to be this. So it, you paint basically inside the line that you've just created with the uh, light grey in concentric shapes basically. You don't want to go too slow with the brush because you'll mess it up. You don't want to go too fast because you'll mess it up as well. So it's about brush angle, brush speed. Not too slow, not too fast. Uh, and again, that's personal. That's personal preference. Everybody will paint different. I'm just saying like this is what I do. Across the very edges. Across the top. There. Yeah, and then the bottom side. Right, so there you go. So you got like a again, it's on the lower legs. Wait for that to, to focus in there. I think so. Yeah. So across the lower legs, you've got. Thigh, knee, shin, shin, knee, thigh. So it goes around a circle, and again, I do everything all at once. But from there, in the same direction that you'd build up the light on the artistic one, I would concentrate. So, like, I'm doing the the blends in the very center of the legs. You would concentrate the light in the very center of there. So, if you wanted to mix the two styles sort of together, you would do like a reflection line right in the center, and very thin again, in the very center of the uh, of the thigh, like there, and then. Right just down there, like so, and then right down the middle, maybe like there or something. So all together, again it's thin and it's about balancing those colours together, but I think that looks great um, straight away. And I think, same as always, again, this is, uh, it wasn't intended to be a tutorial for this, but it's like mixing the styles together sometimes, like doing a collaboration of all sorts of things, it does look really good. So that's that one, oops, sorry I keep knocking the camera. And this one again, thin layer got quite a bit of water on the brush and then just in concentric shapes just building up that blend we had going before right in the very center and like I said I do more layers and you should do more layers than this obviously when you're doing it yourself I'm just trying to save time I'm recording these in HD obviously so um, even a few minutes is like a large file and again you can use your wet blend for that and clean the brush off and then once you've got the wet paint on the model, like this, you clean the brush and you'd uh, sort of fade the edges in with pure water. But last time actually that glared on the camera real bad. I'm trying to work on a, a slightly different setup now because some of the lights that I'm using really do glare um, when the paint's wet. So, and again, you do like the, the foot and everything. So just there. Right in the very centres. Like that. So basically, if you can go through with a brush and just go like, hmm, or like that, that's where you'd put the light line. So if you're going again, if you're doing for like a speed painting effect, you can just go like that with a brush. And once you know where to put the lines. So normally, like I said normally that's so that's that's an artistic style with it. But what I would normally do is a combination of the two as well, and more layers, obviously. But like, I would do like uh, an edge highlight on this one as well. But you can see there that overall, obviously, it looks black, um, and you've got you know the majority of the armor is black. But actually, you know, at least fifty percent of the armor is is definitely black. And then we're going to do a, a null oil wash as well, um, just for now. But this one. That I, I sometimes that looks better, and of course I've done the little uh, the edge highlights and stuff, but it, it it does look good when it's got a solid, very neat edge highlight. 
and it's about staying consistent throughout but obviously overall it still does look black but you see there where I've got the um, the airbrush colour faded in we really need to shade that off um, and I would usually use black for that so I'll show you that in a second but just again still like the last last highlight because like I said we're running out of time a little bit um, just white ceramite white and of course you can mix these colours together and you can make a mid you know a mid tone between celestial grey and white but like I said just to save time we're not going to do that so this one very fast um, tiny concentric shapes again just being as neat as possible we'll do that there uh, uh. And then we'll paint those little reflecting spots back on. Like that. So I do like to do everything at once. I've seen people like just spend ages worrying about where other things are. It's like, come on, <laughs> it's fine, it looks fine. So there you go. Um white all the way through and like I said we're going to shade it off with black in fact I might do that now so it's got time to dry um, so I'm going to use a different brush um, a brush I don't you know it's like a frayed old one but of course it's good for edge highlighting yeah for washing so so if that's dry let's have a look yeah it should be so let's if you get the black in ties it all together um, and again you could use a, a glaze of um, the Vallejo surface primer or Abaddon black just thinned or thinned with glaze mediums um, wash the whole thing black people worry too much about the paint being dry and wet about leaving it to be completely dry I think that's silly a bit well not, not no offense or anything it's not silly so it's, you know uh, you just don't worry about stuff. Just there's rules and everything, definitely. But don't uh, don't spend too much time in your head worrying about stuff. Definitely, just I mean, you know, same as anything. So yeah, got a bit of glare going on, but obviously you can see that the black ties it in. So afterwards, I'm going to paint another black layer in just to smooth it off uh, and really reinforce the low light. So this one again, hopefully you can see the artistic, the slightly more artistic, slightly more cartoony style that we've got going on there. Um, so I'm going to hold the model from like there and then right in the very centres again I'm just going to paint a thinner line hopefully you can see that a bit more paint in the brush again paint consistency is really important that's a really important uh, thing because if you get it wrong it's about being consistent across the entire model so in fact yeah, you can't see that because of my hand can you? Right, so a very, very fine white line within the the confines of the concentric, you know, the, in within concentric shapes and the other in fact. So it's really, it's, it's easier, in fact, I've noticed. It's, it's easier to paint with the uh, Lemian medium. And with water, it's actually kind of difficult to judge the consistency. Or more difficult, at least. And again, so down this one, we got straight down the middle. So I just cocked a little bit up there. See, it just went off a little bit. This keeps going out of focus. Hopefully, keep I think because my, there you go. I put my hand in the way. I'm trying to focus in on my hand a little bit. There you go. Right, because the very middles. So like the line goes all the way across, like the very centre. And then here you can obviously you can do chips and scratches and stuff. So like, you might do um, a couple of chips there, chips, scratches. Um, okay, I just do them really fast. Uh, you can have one there. Right, so that sort of thing. So of course you've got all the all the things in the centre, and then I'll show you with the uh, watered down black just what I do with this sort of thing. For that, and again, a combination of both of these works really well. So very, very thin black, and again, water on the brush, water on the palette. Introduce the water and the paint together, so you don't get too much and too little. So there, in the same sort of way that I've done um, 
grey and white in the straight lines going like vertically I would then also paint the black vertically like this like there and then like there so that it gives it a consistent effect right on the edges like a black line black line black line and then of course I'm not painted around this side but I would obviously do there there and there at the same time so the inside of this one exactly the same do a line this is super quick obviously I'd be much neater in uh, in real life obviously I'd do it slower and with more layers thinner layers and all the rest but just to show you so again not necessarily painted this side of the uh, the shin there would be edge highlights and stuff but just there there and there right so um I would do the same with the other one. Let's just let's paint away and then this one. Hopefully that's is that dry yet? Dry enough? Yeah. So just again, just in the very very edges just there. You can see well like, it naturally fades off, so I would paint a bit of a glaze in there around the edges. You in there. And then in here. The black. And then towards the shadow of this loincloth bit. And then sides and on the out oh, again I've not painted that side properly, but on the outsides of the oops shit. Again on the outsides of the um the shin, knee and shoulder. So that's pretty much it. Right, so again you do more layers and you do it more times. But between the two we've got two there. So on the left you've got an edge highlighting thing where you keep the majority of the armour black but you use successive, with the recipe you use pick three colours and then you do successive highlights, so this time I use Mechanicus Grey, Light Grey, Celestial Grey and White um, and again you might do something different, the edge highlighting I personally prefer, I think it looks really good um, so like try and get this one in focus just there without the, again I've got to do something about these lights, like maybe a diffuser or something would work, but there you go, something like that um, so you've got the nice white edge highlights, but obviously of course it all looks black and you use uh, null nile. So if that doesn't look black enough if you want, you can do another couple of glazes of the black or another couple of washes of the null nile, and obviously then you can reapply any of the colours that you want. So, that, so, that, so that's really nice and uh, I like that one. It would work for any of the space mirrors that said Raven Guard, Black Templars, uh, any, any of them. And then you've got this one which is a bit more artistic and again I do more layers and build it up even more but you've got right across the centre of the model uh, of like a vertical blend going from foot to face like you know like vertically all the way up and you've got uh, again four of colours picked together thinner layers again I do two three different layers of each one and then you've got a reflection line that's consistent across each one of the separate armour panels even though it's kept and I would combine the two together basically like if it was if it was easy enough or like easier to do if you want I would uh, I would combine the two and you can add scratches and chips and damage and weather and everything like that but that's pretty much it for black armor so I've got a few more videos coming up I'm gonna paint the rest of these models today and then uh, I think both of these will be for sale I'm gonna bang them up on eBay uh, I've got some commission work to do so I probably should get that done first so uh, yeah I'll be back with a few videos if, if I do get them finished I'll put up the showcase videos for that um, so you can check back for them I've got a few other tutorials on my YouTube page now you can check out one uh, in particular on zenithal highlighting that I mentioned, I zenithally high high lit, I suppose, highlighted these with Mechanica Standard Grey, and I put that up yesterday, and it's on a Patriot Gozar, so it, I think the video is called Tips and Tricks Painting Patriot Gozar with an Airbrush, or zenithal highlighting Patriot Gozar with an Airbrush, so you can uh, you can find that on my on my page as well. If you put Powerhouse Miniatures into Google, you find my website, my Facebook, my eBay shop, my my podcast, my YouTube. You can find you'll find everything. So bang Powerhouse Miniatures into Google and you'll find me all on there and I think that's pretty much it so yeah cheers for watching and have a good day